Welcome to Healthcare Musings, a podcast dedicated to the discussion of critical care and healthcare in general. Here's your host, Dr. Hesham Hasabal. Hello, everyone. Happy to have you with me. Okay, so, you know, there are things that we do in the ICU, best practices such as uh, uh, chemoprophylaxis against DVT or uh, early mobility or, you know, raising the head of the bed for mechanically ventilated patients that we do as part of uh, our best practice. And, you know, one always wonders, you know, is there strong evidence behind what we do? Uh, And one of these things is stress ulcer prophylaxis. Uh, Many clinicians, myself included, will when someone is intubated, placed on invasive mechanical ventilation, will prescribe um, stress ulcer prophylaxis to protect the patients against significant uh, gastrointestinal bleeding from stress of being on the ventilator. Um, yet, you know, we be doing we do it. We've been doing it for many years. The question is: Is there evidence behind it? I mean, is there medical evidence supporting what we do? And so, enter this study that was recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, that I want to discuss in this latest uh, uh, edition of um, Journal Club on um, Healthcare Musings. Okay, so there. Um, this, uh, it was a multi-center, uh, multi-hospital, randomized controlled trial that studied the effect of proton pump inhibition, and specifically it was 40 milligrams of pantoprazole daily uh, versus placebo for stress ulcer prophylaxis in patients placed on invasive mechanical ventilation. Uh, so th- they w- what they wanted to see was, do patients randomized to pantoprazole have less bleeding versus placebo. And then there were other secondary uh, uh, outcomes such as mortality, uh, C. difficile infections, and ventilator-associated pneumonia. Why they look at that is because when you suppress gastric acid, you pos- theoretically increase the risk of C. difficile uh, because, uh, and then pneumonia. Uh, and the reason is your gastric acid with a pH of about 1 or 1.5 uh, is the number one defense against infection. Uh, I always give this lecture during the summer that if uh, you're at a picnic and you love potato salad and the potato salad is uh, contaminated, right? If you eat the potato salad first on an empty stomach, all of that stomach acid will kill whatever staph aureus or whatever was on it and you are less likely to be sick. However, if you've had a hot dog and a hamburger and potato chips and then have potato salad, all of the gastric acid was consumed by those other foods now you're more liable to get sick from the contaminated potato salad. So gastric acid is very important as a mechanism to prevent infection. And so they wanted to see, okay, for the how were the as secondary outcomes were the patients randomized to pantoprazole? Did they have more C diff and did they have um, more pneumonia and did they have a higher mortality? So. What they found was that patients assigned to receive pantoprazole did indeed have less clinically significant bleeding, uh, 1% in the pantoprazole group versus 3.5% in the placebo group. And there was no mof- no effect on, on mortality. So the patients that got pantoprazole didn't die more or die less. It, w- it, was, it was about the same. Interestingly, there was a greater number of people, of patients, a greater percentage of patients who did develop C. diff uh, in the hospital uh, who were randomized to pantoprazole, but it did not reach statistical significance. And what that means is that that finding could be due to chance. And so what we say is that there was a trend toward C. difficile infections in patients who received pantoprazole, but again, it did not reach statistical significance. And that, that's something to keep in mind, right? Because C. difficile can be a very bad infection, and it can cause toxic megacolon and septic shock and bowel perforation. So it's something to keep in mind. However, again, to be technical, it did not reach statistical significance in this um, uh, study. Uh, and then there was no difference in the rates of ventilator-associated pneumonia. So, you know, I guess it's how does this change my practice? Well, first, it shows that, you know, I used to do a lot of H2 blockers like uh, famotidine, uh, but now uh, this has changed my practice. And then now I'm using pantoprazole 40 milligrams daily when I um, uh, prescribe stress ulcer prophylaxis for patients who are intubated in the ICU. And 
I think this study just reinforces that what we've been doing with respect to stress ultra prophylaxis does indeed have good data behind it. And it makes me feel better that at least it's not just, you know, eminence based medicine, right? Just, I've been doing it my whole life and therefore I think it's right. No, that this is actual evidence based medicine, that there is a, a good randomized control trial that shows that stress ultra prophylaxis in patients who are intubated with pentoprazole does indeed reduce clinically significant bleeding, um, with the caveat that perhaps these patients are a little bit higher risk of getting C. difficile uh, infection. Anyway, the, again, this this, uh, this study was published in the uh, New England Journal of Medicine, and I will um, uh, post the link to the study uh, in the show notes. Uh, thank you so much for your time and attention, and until next time, this is Dr. Hashem Hasabala signing off on Healthcare Musings.